Glad to have you back. This is now the Money Motivation segment. Grain storage business is said to be another oil in the agri sector. Of course, a means of making millions as some agricultural produce appreciate over time because of shortage in the market and increase in consumption rates. We have David Lama, an uh, agribusiness expert, who joins us via the phone to educate us on grain storage. David, good morning and thank you for being on the show this morning. Hello, good morning. All right. But can you tell us more about grain storage as uh, another oil sector in the agri business? Um, uh, grain business is a, is a good business for business that is not only for people that are, that are deeply into the business. Like people that are working class people that actually get themselves involved in the business without leaving their job. Mm. So and the business I you, you is a business that you can you make not less than uh, fifty percent profit. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go into green business, what you just need to do you buy the commodity during surplus, I mean during the harvest period. Like now, corn is uh, this is time for harvest for corn. Uh, from now to December, you can you can get it. You go to the local market. I mean the farm market. You get it the cheaper price, and then you keep it. Maybe with, in the space of two to three months, you sell it. So there are other commodities that want to actually go in. Okay, um, t talking about the grains now, what are the kind of grains we're looking at? You you just mentioned corn. What, what are the grains? Yeah. Okay, we, we, have, we have corn. Okay. We have beans. We have beans. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, um, let, let's just go on a very short break. When we return, we'll, you'll continue with that line of thought of yours. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Please do stay with us. We'll go on a short break now. We still have with us David Lama, an agripreneur, who is still talking to us about storage business, you know, how to start a storage, um, green storage business, as it were, and he joins us virtually. Um, just before that short commercial break, um, David, you, I was asking, what are the greens in question? What are the greens we're looking at? Um, uh, you, if one want to go into green business, you can you can go into straw beans. Okay. Corn, which is maize, which is maize, okay. palm oil, uh, rice, okay. sesame seed, okay. and ginger, and sorghum. Okay. There are other commodities that, uh, there are other commodities that one can actually uh, invest in, but basically this is um, my area of concentration. Okay. Okay, so um, yes, sir. you said, so, and, okay, shoot, you have the floor. Go yes, ahead. Like, these greens, these greens, they all have the uh, seasons. Okay. Like, like in May now, they have this, uh, they just start now. Mm -hmm. So, for people that want to do stories, I would not advise them to buy the commodity now, to buy the commodity now, okay. because of the moisture level that is in. Except you want to buy it and then, you, you dry it. So when you dry it, and then you, that's when you can now do the storage. Okay. Yes, because of the mature level. But if you can wait a little bit from maybe next month towards the end of the month, you can actually, which is October, you can okay. actually buy those commodities. So the mature level at that particular period, when you do the storage, you won't have any issue of moisture. Okay. Uh, you, you, yes. You yes. said earlier that the best time to purchase these grains is um, during the harvest period because it's cheaper. Yes, sir. Yes, but during yes, that sir. period as well, the rainy, uh, it's also the rainy season. So how do you, you know, um, put, juxtapose that with what you said that um, it's not advisable to buy during the rainy season due to moisture? Yes, sir. That means I'm talking about corn. 
Okay, okay. Corn specifically. Now, what, okay. I, I, what I do now, I just do the trading part. Okay. I buy corn, I move it to this room, from this market to this other market, and then you sell it, you make your profit. Okay. Then, once it is October ending, that's where the dry season starts here, from where I am. Okay, okay. So then, from, then you can, that's the period for storage, that's where I do my storage. Okay. But if you still want to buy it now and do your storage, it means that you have to redry it. You don't just buy from the market and then I'm going to do your storage. Okay. Mm. Yes, you don't do that. So you, you because once there's moisture, once there's moisture, I you will have problem with your storage. Okay. Yes. Okay. You talk about redrying. It's oh, uh, is it that you? Is it the natural means of drying, or there are some ways, artificial ways to dry? It? Because the where you are, um, maybe it could be a place that's when it's hot, it's really hot. But some other places. That, are, that I may not have the same climate as yours. Is, this, is that an artificial way of drying it, or this redrying method has to be the natural air drying? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's say, for instance, you, you buy a commodity. Maybe the, you, you also, that the moisture level of it maybe is uh, it's like twenty to thirty percent moisture level. So why you just need to do? If you have a, a fan, you can you can you can switch on your fans and then. Those fans will help you to the moisture that is in the community will evaporate mm. naturally to evaporate naturally. And then you 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 dry also in a ventilated area where there's close ventilation. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how yes. about um having to safeguard it from insects and rodents? Is that what? How about having to save while you're leaving it dry, having to safeguard these grains from insects and rodents that may damage it? That's why I said you need to, it will take more than two to three weeks. You sunlight. Mm. Two to three weeks. Sunlight, or you put it under the, under the, the cross ventilation. Yeah, I know. So I got that point. I'm just asking why you're cross ventilating and drying it. The possibility of insects and rodents having to come to damage it. That's what I'm saying. Is there something to use to safeguard it just to make sure rats and insects don't come to damage your grains? Okay, during that period, before you sunlight a very particular environment that you are drying it, what you need to do is just to fumigate the okay. your, your store, your warehouse. Mm. So you fumigate, when you fumigate, you know, it will take long, uh, it will take time before those things can come back again. Mm. All right. Okay, let's delve to the commercial aspect of this business now. Um, how much will be needed to, you know, invest in this business on um, a medium scale now, not a large scale, for someone who wants to start, you know, the business? How much are we looking at? Um, to, start, to start this business, it all depends on how you want to start it. Okay. You can start, with, let's say, with two pack of corn, which mm. is this, or soya beans. Okay. And the, like now, currently, the pack of corn is 16,000 naira. 15, 16,000 naira. Okay. okay. So let's say you have, you want to start with two packs, five packs, it's, it's all depend on you. Okay. So with 50,000, you can actually start business. Okay. And and t talking about you know, you have also something. Yeah, you know one thing with this commodity trading is that once you are you 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 have to start small. Okay. You learn from there, and then from there you can now start increasing. You know, but if you don't have the if you don't have the knowledge, and then you actually put in your money. You know, your, your, your money will actually buy you knowledge, mm -hmm. but you will lose your capital. Mm -hmm. And you know, the country where we are, capital is one of the backbone of business. Mm -hmm. So if you lose capital, it's not as if you, lose, you, have, you have lost your life. Mm. All right. So the only way... Hey, hello? Yes, I'm yeah. with you. So the only way to, to protect your capital, okay. the only way you can, you can protect your capital is for you to know the type of commodity you are buying, then we have to sell it. 
Right now, corn, you buy corn now, let's buy corn at the rate of 16,000 yards mm-hmm. now. And you will make it very much. Okay. You can make like 15, 60 to 70 percent of it. Okay. Yes. Okay. That one is, that, that one, I'm, I'm 90 percent sure. Okay, l- l- let's look at the market. You know, it's one thing to um, invest in the business. You get the bags of grains, be it corn or, you know, so- soya beans, as you've said, you know, ginger and the rest of them. But but the market, transportation to the market, and I know oftentimes, you know, people who trade in grains like these, they tend to get from um, the yeah. northern states and transport down to southwestern states. So the cost of transportation and then the markets you're selling to, What's the process like in terms of, you know, getting a truck to probably, you know, load your goods, get them down to the markets that is willing to, um, you know, buy them from you? Um, it's not, it, it, like, the uh, agro community, they okay. are, you know, is a everyday people eat. Yes. So, now that is, is, is what, what matters is, is, is your profit, the profit you want to make. Mm-hmm. You could okay. buy commodity from this, uh, our local market here, and mm-hmm. still move it to another local market and make oh. your profit. I'm talking about here in the north. Okay. Okay. Yes. Like, for instance, uh, there's, there's, uh, last week, we traveled to Kano, we were able to go to some bag of uh, rice. Okay. So when we proceed to those bag of rice, we actually moved them from that village and then we moved it to another market in the there in, in that same state, Kano. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we still we make like profit margin of twenty to thirty percent. Okay. So if if you are talking about moving them from from north so, from from north here to yeah, south or yeah. east. Mm-hmm. You, you know the profit mar- the profit margin will be high, but okay. the risk level is also a little bit high. High, exactly. That's why it, 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 that's why if you are doing in last quantity, mm-hmm. that's where insurance comes Okay. It's that. All right. Okay. In basically, what would you say is like? Oh, you already mentioned the profit margin. I was going to come to that. But what would you say has been the rate of um, profit when it comes to agriculture, especially with the insecurity in some parts of the nation that produce uh, a larger percentage of the food. So would you say the profit has, is increasing or the insecurity is contributing to, to a decline in how it should be moving before now? No, no, no. We are talking about insecurity is a different thing. Uh, look at it from this way. Like uh, if, you, if you are buying commodity from here, moving it to, to the east, Sometimes, you know, the drivers will not charge you, they charge you high. They will be telling that the level of security, the way they treat the northern people in the east, this and that. So, and looking at people, if you, you are moving those commodities from here now, because of the level of insecurity, it increases the price level of the transportation, the logistics. Mm. Okay. So that also affects the, the price of the commodity. Yeah. You know, people don't actually come here to buy the commodity, but you can take the risk and move it down to the site to make more profit. Mm. All right. Um, thank you so much, David Lama, for sharing your thoughts on this. We appreciate you. Yeah. All right. That's it on the Morning Motivation segment. Uh, coming up next, we'll have the social media boss and then wrap up the show of the day. Please stay with us. <laughs>